Meet John Doe. He's an aspiring game dev just like you, but he doesn't actually know how to make anything inside a game engine just yet. So like any junior dev, he sets a small goal for himself. Make this cube move using input from his keyboard. So he fires up the Unity editor and names the project Move the Cube. This is where his brain freezes as he realizes that the Unity engine has more buttons than the control panel for a 770. So he turns to the greatest collection of human knowledge on record and searches up how to make a 3D character move on YouTube. Here he finds an endless collection of YouTube videos showing him exactly what to type and where to click to get his little cube moving. And guess what? It actually works. He repeats this process a couple more times, copying code line by line until he gets to a feature that can't be added because it doesn't work with his current code. So he realizes that he either has to scrap the whole project or learn how to do this on his own. Except that's not an option either because he doesn't know how to modify his own code base because all he did was copy it from another person. And so the issue becomes apparent. John didn't actually learn how to do anything. He merely copied until he couldn't anymore. What should he have done instead? He should have taken the time to actually understand what it takes to make a character move. Now there's a hundred different ways to do this, but the key is just to find one of those ways, even if it's not the most efficient on your own. So let's reverse back to the very moment that John realized he was stuck. This time, instead of searching through YouTube, he breaks the problem down and attempts to solve it himself. He knows that in Unity, a game is essentially just a bunch of objects tied in with the script to tell them what to do. So he makes a game object for the floor using the plane shape and he makes an object for the cube using the cube shape. Next, he wants this cube to move depending on his input from his keyboard. So he adds a script to it. He knows that he wants the player to move up if he presses W. So he writes it in pseudocode and searches up the C sharp documentation for it. Now, this is a good question. It's syntax rather than concept related. And it shows that you actually know what you're doing. You just don't know the specifics of how to do it. Here he finds the input command as well as the difference between each method and writes the correct one to his script. Now comes a part where we actually make the character move. For this, it's useful to have knowledge of the basic physics kinematic equations for position, velocity, and speed. Now it's also important to know basic vector math for both 2D and 3D games. Now I can go deeper into these concepts, but that's going to be on a later video. So for now, let's just assume that John knows these equations. Since position is a function of velocity and time, we'll need a speed variable, typically in the form of a floating point number, a 3D unit vector for the direction, and we are given the time. In most game engines, delta time is given to you. This is the interval in between the last frame to the current frame. Therefore, on any function that is called every single frame, you can add these attributes to your player and it should work. So he sets his 3D vector equal to vector 3 dot forward, since that's what the W key is for, and he sets his position equation equal to transform.position equals itself plus speed times delta time times direction. Then he realizes that he can just use this code for left, right, and backwards direction. And just like that, John made his own feature without having to copy somebody else code for code. And it actually works. Now, is it the most efficient? Definitely not. In fact, there's probably 99 better ways to do this. But now that he has the basics down, he can look up ways to make it more efficient. And even though these ways are a little bit more complex, he'll actually understand them because he has the basics down. For instance, he sees that the input.getAccess command is a much easier way of setting the direction variable, which allows him to clean up his spaghetti code a little bit, but he can still understand it because he sees the resemblance between this and the very basic code that he wrote. Now, this is how you truly learn. Research questions are fine. Inspiration is fine. Copying code word for word from YouTube tutorials is probably not fine. I hope this inspires you to slow down, take your time and actually learn how to create and develop. And always keep in mind that with game dev, it's a marathon, not a sprint.